everyone i'm keisha charmaine and i'm back here with a new video this is gonna be a get ready with me so i'm gonna be doing my makeup because i want to take a picture with this book natural hollywood came out with her special edition volume one coffee table book you may have seen on my channel i have modeled for jennifer lord aka natural hollywood a couple times i'll actually link this video before definitely check it out definitely check it out i love doing retro lock styles and looks um if you follow me for a while you might know that i really love a retro look i just i really love like a 20s 30s 40s like that era the pinup kind of look that's so me or at least that's me in my head because i don't really um dress like that in real life although i i probably could and i probably should because i i like to did you guys see sylvie's love the new movie on amazon prime it was like really um like harlem 20s like i don't was it the harlem renaissance time period maybe right after i don't know but yeah um anyway i'm in this book and i'm going to show you my photo just mine if you guys want to see the rest of the natural hairstyle she's done you guys can purchase and get your own copy down below but this is me on texture on the runway this is such a dope shot this is me walking the runway and as you can see my locks are styled in like a really afro futuristic style and gold you know i love gold so yeah, shout out to Jennifer Lord, shout out to Natural Hollywood, and shout out to her coffee table book, volume one, special edition that is. So I want to take a picture for Instagram to show off my feature in the book, so that's why I'm doing my makeup now. <sighs> Today was so stressful. I'm not going to get into it. God is good. Okay. So well, first I'm going to use my leave-in. And um, this is actually a, something I'm working on. It's a product I'm working on for my shop. It's not perfected yet. So that's why it's not available yet, but it'll be available really soon. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just put that on, on top of my hair so that I can lay it down. Cause um, my hair has been washed, but it hasn't been twisted. So it's kind of frizzy. Like I'm working on the scent. And um, I'm thinking it's a rose water based product, so I'm thinking maybe I should just leave the, leave the natural rose water scent to it because it is a beautiful scent. And um, the smell, the scent that I'm coming up with, I'm not sure how everyone will will like it. I like it personally. I don't know how everyone will will, will feel about it, but um, yeah, stay stay tuned for that. That'll be available really soon. Uh, definitely in January. So I'm going to um, tie my hair down. It's been moisturized. So that's what I, what I do. If you don't know that already. If I want smooth hair for the day. I won't use gel for that. I, I will just um, wet it and tie it up. Speaking of gel. My gel is still in the works. I'm working on it. Being that it's the holidays. I have. I haven't been like stressing out my laboratory people but um watch on january 2 <laughs> on january 2 i'm gonna be like hello so you hey big head hey stranger <laughs> so i'm gonna leave this on my hair as i do my makeup and chat with you guys so you guys I've been requested on many occasions to, oh, this is barely enough product, but let's see. I've been requested on many occasions to make a video on how I started my business and things of that nature. Um, I have been hesitant on making this video in part because I don't really want to tell anybody what they should do. But essentially, people are not asking me what they should do. People are asking me what I did. And I can absolutely tell you what I did. So, as you may know, I started my YouTube channel 
10 years ago when I was a uh, well, technically, I started my YouTube channel in high school, and I was uploading foolishness with my friends. But um, I started showcasing um, my lock journey once I started my locks in 2010, and I was a sophomore in uh, in college. And slowly but surely, very slowly but surely, I I grew a following, right? And for a while, you know, back in those times especially, I found that, like, it was really easy to get noticed by brands. I guess because YouTube wasn't as saturated as it is now. But, yes, yeah, so I was able to get um, cute little brand deals pretty easily back then, like right after college. So that's what I was doing to make money as I was seeking employment. I wasn't really getting steady employment. I was getting like um, jobs that had like end dates, temporary jobs, or part-time jobs. So I wasn't really getting what I was looking for. My degree was in Africana Studies and Sociology. I was working at my old high school with a college counselor helping with the college transition um i was i also worked at a college resource center Ooh, that was in the bronx lord that was a commute and a half child if you're not from new york city you probably have no idea how big new york city is especially if you're taking a train and not driving child anyway what else did I do? I worked at Home Depot really briefly. Um, very, very briefly. I'm like, that was not for me at all. Uh, retail? Oh no. Mm -mm. Um, what else did I do? Oh! And my, f I also worked at a homeless shelter at the, at the after school program in a homeless shelter. So I worked with the kids. I loved that job. I loved it. I loved it. It just wasn't enough hours. It wasn't enough. I mean, the pay was decent, but it just wasn't enough hours. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, my last job, I was a caseworker at a mental illness facility. Um, I'll, I'm going to phrase it like that because I don't want I don't want to put it out there too much because I, I know... Um, I have my reasons. I don't want to put it out there too much. But, um, I loved that job. I did. I really loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I did love it there. I mean, although sometimes it was difficult because sometimes, um, sometimes the higher-ups were, were very frustrating. And also sometimes some of the the clients the patients i don't want to say patients because it wasn't it was like an outpatient facility you, you're not supposed to use terms like functioning and like high functioning and low functioning because it's um it kind of like dehumanizes the people a little bit so but us but if you're not in the field then you probably don't know that so um I'll put it like this, a lot of the, most of the people there were very independent, I'll say it like that. But sometimes there were people, pe sometimes there would be people there who would come in who, who were not very stable. And, and when we had those kinds of incidences, that made the job really, really trying. But um, I, overall, I really loved that job, I did. But I, I quit that job abruptly because of stuff that happened in my personal life. And by then, I had already got myself a decent sized following. And also by then, I had already started selling, what do you call it, lock accessories. So let me rewind a little bit. As I was working in Home Depot, that's when I started selling accessories. And the reason why I did that was because I was working at Home Depot. I wasn't making enough money 
to my liking. I was able to pay my little bills, but I wasn't, I, I'm a hustler, okay? I wasn't making enough money to my liking. So, I've always been artistic and crafty. So, I, I learned how to make lock accessories, and that's what I did, and I sold them. I used a website called storeenvy.com. You know, it's a store similar to like an Etsy.com. Basically, where you can sell whatever sell your things your your art your crafts your clothes whatever your merchandise and it was very very helpful um store envy you know they covered a lot for me uh, on the back end so i didn't really have to learn how to create a website or things of that nature it was very um user friendly so if you're starting out that's something you may want to do if um, you may want to use a website that's already established to help you to help you get started so so I there's no guarantees but I prefer guaranteed money especially if I'm going to be um, having my own business I can't really I really can't guarantee money because people have to want to shop from me and I can't control if people want to shop from me. So one way that I decided to get regular money was to create a subscription service. So I had a subscription service on my jewelry website basically for I think it was, I had $19.99 you can get some handmade accessories from me every month. And that that was a really, really useful way for me to get that money every month. Of course, not everybody was subscribing. Some people were just buying jewelry. And the combination of people who were buying jewelry and people who were subscribing made me some decent money. So at that point, and when I say decent, I mean it was good. It was good um, supplemental income. I think at that point I was probably making two to three grand a month. And remember, I was working at Home Depot. Uh, eventually, I quit Home Depot, and I quit Home Depot abruptly because uh, I got chosen to model for Talia YG's natural hair show in Times Square under um, Jamaican Mango and Lime. I was um, a live model and I requested for the day off a couple of times and they denied me each time. So I just, I just didn't go. I'm like, I'm not going to miss this opportunity to model for them. Sorry. So I just didn't, so I, so I didn't go to work that day. And then I said, you know what? I'm not going back. After I finished, after like I went, got home that day and I was like, it's such a good day. I'm not going back to that job. I'm going to just put all my eggs into this, into this website. Um, while, while I did not like working at Home Depot very much. I mean, it had its, its pros and its cons. But while it wasn't for me. I decided that that wasn't the best idea for me to quit at that time because I I just I wanted to be, be making more money so it's, it's as simple as that so um, eventually I got in I had gotten the job at the um, at the college resource center and then at the at the after-school program and then at the mental facility and what would have been perfect is for me to be able to build, do my business and build it while working that nine to five at the mental facility, but I would be so exhausted. And I remember this was maybe what year was that? 2015 and 16. I was pushing out YouTube videos pretty good, pretty good. And like, 
those were good quality videos and everything and I was getting good views and all that I was getting good money but I was so tired it was really exhausting working full-time and trying to be on YouTube full-time and have my business full-time it was very difficult so um, again I went through something in my life I quit my job um, and I decided to go all in actually at that point was when I started to write my book more than a year journey. So while I was writing my book, I I wanted to offer a product on my website that was easier to produce, easier to get out to my customers and by that I mean like making the lock jewelry was time consuming and it was hard on my fingers I'm not gonna lie I miss being able to, being able to wear my my acrylics or my gel nails so I wanted to be able to have my cash cow something a little easier so that's when I decided to sell the Infinity Head Wraps. That was probably the best decision I made at the time. And eventually I just I completely stopped selling the jewelry. The Infinity Head Wraps were amazing and still are. So yeah, eventually and then my book came out. I think my book came out on my 26th birthday. And and then maybe the following year I came out with my oils. And all the while I'm still growing my Instagram following. I'm still growing my YouTube following. I'm still posting regularly on those platforms. And that's important because that essentially was my audience I didn't pay for Google ads or Facebook ads or Instagram ads I might have paid for a couple Instagram ads yes I did maybe not that time I think I started doing that later on um, more in more recent history but essentially my customers came from my social media also one thing I need to point out was that I established an email list. That was the best decision that I could have made for my for my business. I, I said I just said the, the infinity head wraps. Well yeah the infinity head wraps was the best decision I could have made as far as a product to sell. But as far as marketing the email list was my my smartest move and I, I used MailChimp.com for my email list and that's something I learned from um, at, at my job at my, my previous job where I was working as a um, as the caseworker I remember I was in charge of the website for my job and I also worked with the email list and stuff and to e like to email the like the contributors the like the donators donators the the people who would donate to the, my job it was a nonprofit so I would like reach out to them through the mailing list and tell them about the events we're having and like other ways they can donate if they want to and things like that so I was like this is really good I, I need to use this for my business so I so shout out to my, my last job for that for teaching me about that my face is coming out well it's really it's just amazing when you have a nice base because these days what you need like a, a flawless eyeshadow for and all that no it's it's all about the base no trouble that was corny
so, so I'm just setting it. I'm sorry if you guys cared about the products I'm using. I have not been mentioning anything. So I will put it down below. In the description. Okay, so the oils. Now the oils. That was important for me because... I, again, I'm, if I'm trying to grow my income, it's important to sell more expensive items. Well, that's not necessarily true if you're going to be selling cheaper items or less expensive items, then what's most important is, just, is that you just have that um, item seen by more eyes. Let's put it like this. If you want to make $1,000 and you have an item that costs a thousand dollars you only have to sell one to hit your goal but if you have an item that costs one dollar then you need to sell one thousand of those to hit your goal so it's really good in general if you're gonna have a business where you're selling things where you have products whether electronic or um, tangible products it's important that you have different price points you know so you have the cheaper items and the more expensive items and when i started selling the oils and the oil bundles that's i started to be able to have more expensive items well, granted they're not that expensive but they're more expensive than an eight dollar head wrap eight dollar head wrap versus my 50 something dollar bundle right okay So yeah, the, the oils and then the hats and the, what else did I come up with? Uh, the pillowcases most recently. All of, all of these things I created to diversify my store. That's not necessary if you're trying to establish a successful business. You don't really need all, a bunch of products. You just really need one good product honestly and just promote that and sell it but i want to be able to have like an online beauty supply store for women with locks and natural hair so that's why i do find it important to keep coming out with different products from my shop and i'll do that until i'm content with what i have to offer And a lot of times people think, oh, I can't sell anything because I don't have a following. First of all, having a following does not guarantee sales. Um, what are people following you for? Are people following you because you look good? Because you're sexy? You're pretty? If that's why they're following you, they're not gonna follow, they're not gonna buy your whatever you're pushing. If they're following you because they know you provide a service that they're interested in, then they're more likely to shop from you. So it's really important that if you are trying to sell a product, you also have to give give for free as well. And I don't just mean free giveaways, although that's good. I am doing. I just did a giveaway. Um, I didn't send out the, the products yet, but I did just give, do a giveaway. For the holidays there are nine winners but I also mean as far as like you see what I do here on YouTube I give you guys free tips and advice for the past 10 years I've been doing that so you got to give a little give a lot actually you got to give a lot You can't charge for everything. At least not when you're getting started because you need to establish yourself as, you know, a resource or, you know, a, somebody who's an expert on something or somebody who, it all depends on what you're, what you're selling, right?
if you're trying to sell workout equipment, your best bet it will be to put post content with you working out, showing that you are great at fitness. It wouldn't be wise for you to just come out and say, hey, I have these products that work really well. People want receipts, you know? I just like a little bit of blush. I don't, it just, it really brings out my, my inner youth. And I do a little bit on my nose too. Where I learned that? I think I learned that from Sunkiss Alba from back in the day. What else? So, so everything that I've just mentioned to you guys, that equates to how many sources of income? So my book, which, which I started selling on Amazon, my online store, where I sell all my products, the oils, the head wraps, the pillowcases, the crochet needles all those things my youtube channel which i have ads running on here google pays every month from that and instagram i well instagram and youtube as well i will promote other brands that's not a conflict of interest and um get paid for those so that's Kind of like four, the way, well, the way I phrased the last one is kind of weird. But I'll say four sources of income, right? And that's where I was able to create a six-figure gross income, right? Everyone doesn't want to have multiple sources of income. And honestly, that's not always necessary. Oh, I also forgot, I forgot to mention my investments. Um... But I try not to like focus on that too much because that gives me anxiety <laughs> when I think about the money I put into things to to grow <coughs> different funds, and I'm working on getting getting started with real estate soon. But that with that being said, again, you don't need to have multiple sources of income. Although it's recommended, sometimes times can get kind of crazy and. You may lose the source of income. I think 2020 taught us a lot when it comes to that. So I'm going to just put on my eyeliner and, and wrap this video. Okay. So essentially that is what I did. I also want to mention that you have to be prepared to invest in yourself. Whether that means literally like purchasing ingredients pur purchasing raw materials you have to invest into your business as far as that goes but also you want to invest into yourself as far as hiring coaches which i've done countless times hiring um accountants that's gonna be really important you want to do that while that may cost some money it's you're going to be saving money in the process, essentially, in the long run. Um, what else? Remember to do your research as far as your local laws. You know, I can't give general advice as far as that goes because I live in New York City. You may live in California. Y'all going to have different, we're going to have different rules that we need to abide by. So definitely do your research on that. I Again, I didn't go to school for business. Maybe you didn't go to school for business. That does not mean that you cannot pursue business. Clearly, right? Yeah, so figure out if you want to create an LLC, if you're going to be a sole proprietor or S Corp, C Corp, or I don't, I don't even remember all the different terminologies. I just know I got an LLC, right? <sighs> and if you need someone to hide, if you need... And if you need to hire somebody for that part of your business development, then do that. 
find you a business lawyer. Okay, I can't think of anything else I need to mention in this video. Um, leave a comment down below and let me know if you have any questions. If um, I didn't go in depth enough, um, maybe I'll come out with a, an ebook. I'll see what you guys' feedback is, and I may have to come out with an ebook so that and it'll be really cheap, so that you guys can have a resource. As far as maybe you want specifically details on how to create create a hair product line or something along the lines of what I do. So. Um, Drop down your comments down below. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll either answer them in another video in the ebook format or I'll answer your comment. Thank you so much for watching. Love, light, and locks. Also, I know if you guys, if you guys tried to, if you guys attempted to shop on my shop right now, it is the end of June. It's the end of December. That was weird. It's the end of December. I'm pretty much sold out on most things. I do still have pillowcases. I do still have some Infinity head wraps. I still do have some satin lined hats. But I'll be restocking the oils, the head wraps, the satin hats very, very soon. So stay tuned. Make sure you're on my email list. I have the link down below in my description box. So sign up for that so you can be notified. And for 2021, I'm tr gonna be working very, very hard to make sure that I'm not getting sold out so quickly without being able to re-up. Because if I was able, if I had been able to re-up quicker in 2020, I could have made so much more money. I could have helped so much more people. Um, definitely check out my testimonials. Um, I have a couple on the website, but for some reason, people tend to send me testimonials via Instagram the most so I have a highlight on my Instagram page where you can see my countless testimonials people are loving the horsetail leaf growth oil in particular they love them all though just saying but the horsetail leaf growth oil I swear by that product a lot of care and love goes into that and a lot of time and energy went into the formulation of that but yeah anyway Enough rambling. Thank you so much for watching. Love, light, and locks. Oh yeah, and I want to give a quick shout out to my sister Shantae who made this sweater beautifully made. I love the colors. It's not colors I would typically gravitate to. So, you know, I just want to switch it up a bit, you know. So, shout out to her. I'll also have her Etsy down below if you guys want to check out her shop. Thanks for watching. Love, light, and locks. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can always visit www.keishacharmaine.com for hair growth products, hair accessories, and more. But don't leave just yet. Check out my featured video and my latest video.